Mental Projectors, this episode is just for you. I know that there's not a lot of information out there in the human design world about the mental projector, um, how they make decisions, how their energy works, and it is different than, say, an emotional projector or a splenic projector. Like, it has a different feel to it, as all of them do. Um, it, but there's just not a lot of information. So today the conversation is with Janelle Turner and she is a mental projector and shares her experience on how she reacted when she learned she was a mental projector. She actually didn't think that she was initially and how that shock really caused waves in her life. Um, how she learned to make decisions and how she used her third line in trial and error to figure out what was gonna work for her. Um, and then how she found freedom within human design and within her own design to really use it to feel like herself and to embrace who she was on a deeper level. And of course, how we get into like how human design really shows us compassion <clears throat> towards other people as well, especially our spouses and um, all so much more goodness. But I hope you enjoy this episode. She is an amazing woman that has a lot of knowledge on human design. So um, have a listen and can't wait to see you next week. Hey, Janelle, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your wisdom in human design. You're a human design coach as well. So please introduce yourself and share what you do with the audience. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Janelle. I'm a 3-6 mental projector and... I'm a, I don't even know what I call myself. I'll, today we'll call myself a human design intuitive guide. Ooh, ooh, I, like it. I have a weird thing with, with labels, which makes sense. Being yeah. a mental projector and undefined G, I'm like, I don't know, I'm something. Um, <laughs> but I really, I'm into sharing human design with other people and sharing each individual's human design with them. Each time I look at a chart, I get really excited and I just want to share everything that I see. And I'm really getting into the part now where I'm also sharing the things that I feel that I don't necessarily see in the chart. Yeah. My intuition has been like a touchy, not touchy subject, but like, I don't know. It's woo. -woo. The intuition is woo woo. And I don't know about it sometimes. I don't know totally. if I can trust it. It is. So, it's hard. I mean, even uh, myself as an MG that with that gut response of like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I still struggle and doubt the intuition as well. So I think it, it's it's an interesting journey. And I would love to hear more about you and like where you started with intuition and where you're at now and how you use human design to help you gain trust in your intuition. Um, well, I would say starting probably like about five years ago, that's when I first learned about human design. Um, I had been working on myself and doing all the stuff and inner worky things, but not really because I like control and I don't like, I don't like looking at myself or looking at my past really yeah. at all. I just, yeah. it's like, it's gone, it's happened already. So there it goes. And everybody always wants to look back at it. And I'm like, mm, I'm good. Yeah. Um, that's, like, and, that's a very projective so, thing, I think, too. Projectors don't want to look yeah, at themselves. It, no, and it's also conditioning from my childhood. Um, I was raised by alcoholics, and so I got responsible really quickly. I kind of did it to myself. I made myself, I appointed myself the head of the household um, because I felt like that was the safest thing. Yeah. And I think it really kind of skewed with my... Uh, vision of myself and I had to become like really logical and really practical and responsible and anything that didn't really fit into that mold was to me not a thing. Mm -hmm. I never really was into astrology or any numerology or any of this stuff and then I heard Jenna Zoe talking on a podcast I think it was The Balanced Blonde like five years ago and it was like, oh, human design, cool. And I was like, oh, you put your birth information, you get a thing. I was like, this is like astrology. I'll get a cool, fun thing to know about. And it's yeah. neat. So neat. Yeah. And then so I put my information in. And I was, I was like, what is, what is, 
what? Like, what is this weird shapes and lines and colors and things? Like, I don't, I don't get this. And even when I read like the little information you get, it's still, as you know, you're like, you're still left like, I don't know what this means. Do I want to know what this means? Yeah. I don't know. So I, um, I got kind of really into it and I was reading for a bunch of people that I know and la 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 and a few months passed. And I remember this girl gave me her birth information and I was like, ah, her birth time was the same as mine, except 12 hours different. Oh, that's interesting. And I was on, I was on mybodygraph.com and I was putting in all my stuff, all her stuff. And I realized as I was putting her birth time in, she was born um, in AM. I was born in PM. And as I was putting her birth time in, I was like, I went, shit, shit. This is what I did when I did mine. I put 439, not 1639, which at the time, my body graph was military time. And that's what you had to do. Yeah. So for the first few months of my experiment, I was a 3-5 sacral generator. And I had no idea that I had just totally screwed this whole thing up. And so I got so bad. And I, oh my God. I think, I mean, it, you sitting there as a mental projector thinking you're a generator and people talking about a sacral response. And I'm sure you're going, um, yeah, I have no idea what I was saying. I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't get it. I was like, I'm cool. I like this thing, but I didn't get it. You're totally right. Like I was reading, because when you read about like sacral generator, you're like, okay, I can get on board with this. I yeah. like this thing. My body likes it. I don't like it. My body hates it. Cool. Yeah. Like, but I never really, precisely as you said, I was always like, almost like faking my sacral right. response. I was like, yeah, trying to make it happen. And it was confusing to me. And so yeah. when I put in my real information and realized what I, that I was a 3-6 mental projector, which is a lot different than, it's a lot no different. different. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the three part, of, well, I guess I'm all three, um, but. <laughs> I was really pissed off, but I put away all my human design stuff and I unfollowed all my human design people. And I was really angry at mm -hmm. myself. I was like, you're an idiot for liking this thing. Look what you did. I read through it, made sure I didn't give anybody else false information. And mm -hmm. I, my chart was the only one I messed up, of course. So I got really mad. Were you mad? Were I you found... mad just because you messed up the time or were you mad because you were a projector? All of it. All of it. I was mad because I messed up. And then as a result of me messing up, I was like, well, the universe hates my guts. And now I'm a mental projector. What? Like I was, it wasn't just the projector part. It was the mental projector part the mental that part, really yeah. jacked me up. Yeah. 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 I was like, this yeah. is, this sounds so much harder. This is so much more difficult than being a generator. Can I just go yeah. back? Can I just go back? Like I was annoyed. <laughs> Both things. Yeah. But also, I was really mad that I had met. Like, I felt like I felt really dumb. And I was like, really? I really messed this up. Like, I can't like this thing because I messed it up the first time. Mm -hmm. So I put it all away. And then I kept, like, sneaking peeks at people's Instagram pages. I was like, oh, Jess Fields, let me take a look. Oh, Vanessa, let me go. And I would just look and then go back like I was cheating on something. Yeah. And I was... I was like really trying to tell myself, no, this isn't smart. This isn't logical. You don't like this thing. And I couldn't, like, yeah, I couldn't. It was so weird. This is the first time in my life that has ever happened. And so I finally, finally, like, let myself off the hook for mm -hmm. screwing up. And I said, if you want to like this thing, you can like this thing. And then I really liked this thing. So, yeah, and then so I got really into it. I took a mentorship program with Jess Fields, who is my one of my all time favorite human design teacher teachers, and yes. she's and a lot of other people I connected. Um, I started my own podcast, and then I started reading for people and taking money on um, Venmo. Yeah, and then I made a website, and I'm like, oh, I think I can do this as like a professional thing. And that was two and a half years ago, I think I started yeah. my website. And it's very simple. I'm a very simple person. I don't like a lot of 
jazzy stuff. Yeah. So my website is like very simple. I read charts. Like that's all I do. I'm not really a coach because I'm not here for you all the time. I'm here to mm -hmm. read for you and cheerlead for you on the side, but mm -hmm. I'm not meant to lead from the front and hold your hand. Like I'm a yeah. cross of the Sphinx. So I'm a leader, but not from anywhere consistent because I have an inconsistent G center. So <laughs> it's a bunch of fun stuff in my design, but I've started to become really into it. At first I was, yeah, like I said, ew, I don't want to be this. This looks really hard. But then I realized how special every type is and mental projectors are mm -hmm. special in a lot of ways. And it really helped me to like lean on that and also realize that, whoa, I only have a defined rote and Ajna. So I'm here to use these things. So I yeah. probably should get to talk it. And, and now I can't shut up, basically. I love that. Oh, how do you feel about the whole decision-making process? Because I think as a mental projector, that's one of the harder authorities. Um, uh -huh. How has your relationship been with that and making decisions? And how do you feel now about making decisions versus before human design? Hmm. It's a really vague um, thing. Like authority for in human design, a lot of them are more black and white, as you all know. Yeah. Fake rule authority is a little more black and white. Emotional authority is a little more black and white. They're not easier or harder to deal with. You just get a little bit more instruction with them. Yeah. yeah. And with mental projector authority, soundboarding authority, no authority, they can't even pick a name for it. So <laughs> it's kind of a vague thing. And yeah. it was very difficult when I learned about this because I wanted human design to give me steps and like a list, do these things every yeah. day and you'll be aligned with your design. <laughs> and mental, 3-6 mental projector is like the, there's, I'm also motivation innocence. Hello. So it's like all of these things telling me you want so much control mm -hmm. and we all, we, you, we, you should have none. You should basically have none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to really. Yet with the fact that I had to experiment a lot, hello, third line, with my authority and decision-making process. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, it meant I had to slow it down because when it comes to making choices and decisions, I get real up in the Ajna and I'm like, conceptualize, let's logic, this here, this makes sense, this goes here. Like I'm yep. very, that's how I am. Yep. And so to have to want to talk it out, but not hear what the other person thinks, because that's not what I'm doing. And then to go in different environments and think about things and be around different people. I was like, that's a waste. That's a waste of time. Why am I doing that? Yeah. Yeah. And so I experimented with it. I would not do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. See how it would go. And most of the time, I make the same choices. Oh, interesting. The thing, the big important thing is when I take the time to do it with, according to my authority, which is talk it out to people, but just to bounce off my or and words, it's a really weird thing, this outboarding situation. Um, I'm still like. It has to be the right person. It has to be the right person. Because if yeah. you're talking to someone that's going to try and give solve the problem for you or give you suggest like that's not the yeah. point of it right yeah i have another mental projector friend who's really good at it my husband is as good as he can be as a two four sacral generator as good as he can be at it he wants he to help he everyone me but he <laughs> wants to fix he yeah he wants to help and he's gotten a lot better when i'm like hey it's cool like i don't i yeah. don't need i don't need your help because that like that's uh, that hurts his feelings. Like, hello, he wants to be helpful. He loves me. And so I had to be like, look, mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk. It's not going to make any sense. And you just are there. Oh. And he's like, all right, I'll try. He doesn't, sometimes it's not fair for him because he wants, he, it's, mm -hmm. he wants to be able to give his opinion. And he thinks I took that ability away mm -hmm. by saying, let me talk, but don't give me your opinion. And he's like, well, I don't want to know about it if I'm not allowed to give my opinion and i understand that like yeah yeah 
it's like if he put a burden on me or, or something he was really worried about and he was like, don't do anything about it. Like, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. So I feel like, like you said, it has to be the right person, but also it's helpful when it's somebody who's not like as close to you mm-hmm. as yeah. your husband or like uh-huh. somebody you see all the time. That totally makes sense. They just want to, they're, they're like bias. They want to do the thing you want them to do, but at the same time they want to help. So yeah. I yeah. usually sound bored with uh, my friends that know about human design. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's no, the, the big thing I want to mention too, is that there's no order in this. Like you don't have to sound bored first and then go mm-hmm. out into your environment and sample environments second um you it doesn't matter like for me the main thing that was different from making a choice really quickly versus using my authority was after i used my authority i felt a confidence in it that i didn't have before and like a clarity in okay this really is the right thing Mm -hmm. before i'd make the choice i'd be like i'm pretty sure this is probably right and usually it was um but sometimes i would have like doubts and like but if i use my authority it feels more confident. This is my choice. And yeah. I kind of like that better. Yeah. But I also don't care sometimes. Like, sometimes I just look at human design and I go, screw you. And I do the other thing. But yeah. I'm supposed to do that as a 3 6. Like, that's kind of how I'm supposed to do it. So um, I think it helps to be really open minded in the thing and to realize that it's like you said it's going to change the way you make decisions because before Mm -hmm. human design i would get really bogged down on making the like right choice capital r like it has to be the right one yeah you can't go back like third lines have this weird hang up with perfectionism Mm -hmm. which is silly because why when you are here to mess things up like why would you throw that in the mix people but i get it because i'm very much yeah, I don't like people to see things until I think it's ready or hear them or mm-hmm. whatever. And so when it came to making choices, it was very much make sure you make the right one. And now it's like, well, there's probably more than one right, right choice. Mm-hmm. So use your strategy and authority in whichever way it tells you to go like the most, like lean the most way. Mm-hmm. See what happened. It's yeah. now much more to me of like, a crapshoot than it is like a scientific okay you go here to here b to c and now i'm like "Mm." i i guess you could say i'm leaning into my innocence quite a bit yeah i love that and i I mean you're really leaning into the third line too and taking it in its highest expression of like i don't know i'm just gonna see what happens and play with it and figure it out as i go and that's something me as a manifesting generator (laughs) <laughs> struggle with i want the a to b and the shortcut maybe too well, yeah, i want that a yeah. to b and i i love that yeah, you're, you're, you're experimenting here to get to a to b in such a weird way like you're here to go weird ways too yeah. you know you're not oh, really here to be in the box but you have a lot more like you said you have those motors and that engine saying get me there now now and i'm just like yeah, yeah. The third line thing was a really hard for me to wrap my like reconcile that that's what I'm here to do. But now it's a lot. My life feels a lot less stressful mm. now that I don't really care if it looks messy or mm-hmm. like if I mess this thing up or if I don't know what I'm doing. Like I was always fine with messing things up, but <clears throat> kind of. Um, but it was when I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I had to have like. I like made up my own rules for like, okay, now you know enough, you're good. And like, Mm -hmm. who am I to make up those rules? Like, so yeah, the third line part has been pretty fun. I have 10 third lines in my chart and I'm a three, six. So like, it's wow. (laughs) It's a heavy, it's heavy, heavy. Yeah. It's real big. So I almost don't worry about like making choices anymore. Mm -hmm. It's almost just. Get in, get in it first, mm-hmm. and then make a choice. Which seems very backward, but if you have a third line in your profile, you have to get in it first, and yeah. then go. Oh, I like it here, or oh, I don't like this part. 
And it's yep. okay if you start it first and it, then you change things around. You are allowed mm -hmm. to do this. Everyone's allowed to do this. But yeah. as a third line, this is how you get your energy across and your story across is by going, oh, I tried this and I, there was a fire. And then I tried this and that was messed up. But then I went this way and it was awesome. So. Oh, that I love that. Feel. Do you feel like your undefined G also plays into that? Like, I'm just going to try things out and see what I like. Yes. My undefined G center is probably, that was the first thing I learned about in my mentorship program that like broke me completely open into a million billion pieces. And I was like gross sobbing on this Zoom call with all my, with my mentorship, my mentor and all of us that were together. She was talking about the G center. She was just talking about it. And I just was like, well, I don't know what happened. Like it was so crazy the way she was talking about it. And um, it was because I really, my whole life felt like I didn't have, not only I didn't fit in, but I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. Like, not only am I, do I not fit in, but I don't know where I'm supposed to even try to go at all. I felt very like, yeah, my mom was very but much told me I was influenced by other people growing up. You're, these people influence you. This person influences you. You never make up your mind. You don't make have your own choices. She's like, pick something, pick, do this. And she was very much like, do <laughs> things, go to college and <clears throat> get a job. Like, and I, it like, it didn't click with me. And I felt like there was something wrong with me. Yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And as I got older, I was like, crap, I have to figure this shit out. Like, I have to. It's a thing you have to do. Um, and so when I was 29, I was living in California. That's where I grew up my whole life. And I said, this is bullshit. And I left. I packed up my two-door Honda. I took a month or two to do all this, by the way. So I didn't just leave. Um, and I hooked up my U-Haul. And I picked Denver, Colorado off of the map. And I bought... I got like a, a apartment on Craigslist, which I don't recommend. <laughs> no. um, I mean, I'd never been here. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know. Him. I just moved. I just moved. And I felt like if I stayed in California, I was going to die. Mm. And that's very dramatic for me to think. And I was like, Janelle, you what? That's a really dramatic way to go. Like, don't, that's silly. Don't think that. You're not going to. But I had this thing that was like, you have to go. You have to go. Mm -hmm. and so i went um and then three weeks later i met my husband on tinder and i've been here my whole almost 10 years now this whole time it was the best decision i ever made before i knew about human design the point of the story is my undefined g center needed to go it yeah. wasn't it didn't want to stay there anymore it needed right. to experience other things and that's what the g center wants is to experience mm -hmm. places and people and things and love and it's it gives you direction, but when it's undefined, it's okay that you don't have a direction. Mm -hmm. You'll you have lots of them. You have plenty of choices. Yeah, you just don't you don't have to pick one. And that's mm -hmm. where I was stuck. Is like mm -hmm. I have to be something. And that's what she said in her little spiel. My mentor was like, "You get stuck thinking you have to be someone. You have to be something." Mm -hmm. and it was like. Oh my God. I, I like let me off the hook you know yeah totally I mean I have my own experience with like you know I think the generation past especially our parents I mean we're pretty much the same age of you know you go to college you get the job you climb the ladder you I mean that was the succession of life and I always felt like that sounds like death to me to do one thing your entire life sounds like death yeah and it I did it until the generator and, at wood. Yeah, <laughs> and still does. I'm like, I, w I mean, I have no idea how long I'll do this, and I have a defined G, and I'm still all over the place. But it comes from a more like I'm not necessarily seeking an identity. It's more of well, this is just who I want to be right now, and I'm okay with that. And it changes yeah. more in, um. I don't know. I feel like I go through maybe five, 10 year cycles. Every five to 10 years, there's a shift and something else comes through. And I decide to go off and do something else. 
Yeah. I wish my shifts happened really a lot. I want like a lot of shifts, but I also am terrified of change. So <laughs> same time, it's like, nope. but I totally get that. And it, I love that you say this is what I am right now, or this is what I'm doing right now, because that, that, those little two words, the right now really helped me out because mm-hmm. like I said, I don't like change. And I thought like, if you pick something, you're there, you're that person. Yeah. If you have yeah. hobbies and likes and interests and thoughts and feelings, they're always the same because th- yeah. that's you, Yeah, but it's not, <laughs> it's not you. It's your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs. And those things can change all the time. And so to say like, I read human design charts right now, I have this mm-hmm. going on right now really gives you a lot of space to work with and allows you to expand in your mind who you can be and who you are in this moment. It really, it makes me feel less stuck to mm-hmm. be able to to know that I can change. And it's harder as you get older because you're like, well, I'm 40 now. Like, come on. <laughs> I have yep. to have some sort of stability you have kids, so like you have to have some sort of stability, like a modicum of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure a part of you is like, no, I would rather be doing like a million different things and over here and over here and over here and here. And we can still express our designs, but there's parts of our lives where we have to go, ah, crap. Like I have to, like I wait tables three nights a week and I hate it. Mm. I despise it. I can't stand it. But I need the money. Like, it's just how it goes. And I have really worked on compartmentalizing myself from that, what that is, and realizing that that's not really, that's a version of me that has to exist right now in order for me to survive. I'm Mm -hmm. survival view also. Mm -hmm. Um, So I need it for now. And I've had plenty of people tell me, you just quit your job. You just quit your job. Something aligned will come, something blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what if it doesn't? Are you going to pay my rent? Like, what if it mm-hmm. doesn't? Who's going to, who, what, what's going to happen? I know I'm supposed to trust in the universe, but I also need to take care of myself. So that's kind of where I am in my like spiritual human design yeah. journey is yeah. how much. Can I trust in the universe? Yeah. But how much do I have to be here, like take care of myself? Yeah. And that's, I mean, where do you go? (laughs) So many people are in that space. And I mean, I've been in that space of how do you make that move when you don't trust it and you don't trust yourself and you, the fears come up, especially, I mean, thinking about you and your open spleen and the fears are real. They are. Um, and how it's your journey and where you're going. And I mean, I have made so many decisions that, I mean, we're sacral led, but I didn't trust the sacral. And so that ended up not being the best decision. And it's an experiment. It's an experiment. And that's why they say that human design is an experiment because you have to put it into your own life and walk through and be in the process in order to understand how this information comes to life in in you and in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more that you do it, the more that you gain confidence in it. Um, I do 100% like very grounded in the sacral now, but that's only been six months. Prior to that, I was mm-hmm. still moving from a very ungrounded, especially not so much in my personal life, but in business. I was still moving from a very ungrounded fear-based, I have to offer such such and such in order to make money or in order to grow the business or it was fear-based. And in the last six months, I finally got it, right? And it's a journey. It's ah, only you can walk it and only you know what it feels like in your body and no one can hurry the journey along as much as my MG self wants people like, give me the answers. You have to walk, you have to walk the journey yourself and figure it out. Um, And it's in the process that you learn all the things you need to learn. Um, But I totally get that. How do you feel? I want to know about, because I'm a four, six. I want to know about how you feel about the sixth line and like going on the roof now. And like you were in serious third line world up until 30. Was 30, did that rock your world? It rocked my world. That's when I moved here. That's true. That, yeah. 30, like. 
three weeks after I moved here. So yes. Yep. yep. Um, yep. I had my, I, yeah, I had my first child at 30 and that rocked my world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, when I think back on it, it is really interesting, the timing of it all, how it happened. Um, mm -hmm. And again, at 30, I didn't know anything about design, about human design at all. I was just, you know, trying to survive. Um, but hmm. <laughs> the six line is interesting. As a three six, I often feel like even though I am on the roof now, I have I still come off. And I've talked about this with another one of my um, human design mental mentors. He's a mental projector, but he's a two four. And he says, he goes, yeah, you're on the roof. But because you're a third line in, in the front, like predominantly, you still have to get in it. So you're on the roof and you're coming down. And you're going up and you're coming down. He goes, this is exhausting. And I was like... Oh, I never thought of that. He goes, yeah, simply you trying to live as a third line and a sixth line simultaneously is going to be tiring for you. It's going to be exhausting. I was like, well, I don't know about that part of my like energy being yeah. taken away. And I totally get it now. Um, but he said, but that's where the, like, the goal is for you is, yes, as a sixth line, you're on the roof. And I definitely feel that I have slowed down quite a bit. And mm -hmm. that I'm allowing like time to pass without trying to like jam as much stuff into it as I used to. Mm -hmm. uh, my undefined root is a real big thing for me. <laughs> like when I learned about it, I was like, oh, this is one of the things where I feel like I learned a lot about human design. I know so much, but I can't like the root. I just revert back to like immediately stressing myself out and like jacking my adrenals. And be like, oh my God, I got to do this and this and this. And but then my head catches up and I'm like, oh, Janelle, what are you doing? So I've learned now to kind of give myself space. And I think that has a lot to do with the sixth line. Mm -hmm. um, when I learned what the sixth line was, I was also annoyed with this. I was annoyed with the fact that I was a mental projector and a three six. All, I was like, this is annoying. Sixth line, I was like, role model? No. Like, no. I don't want people to watch me. I don't <laughs> want people to. I'm observed, by the way. So, yes. yeah, all the stuff I am, I'm like, I don't want this. So, <laughs> um, I don't want people to watch me. I don't want people to. I don't want to be anyone's role model. That's too much responsibility. I don't want none of that. I don't want any of it. I have also have gate 50 in two places, which is like fear of responsibility. Mm -hmm. When I learned this, it like blew my mind because I have like a big fear of responsibility. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I think that's part of the reason I don't want children. Um, so that's fair. The six line thing, I was annoyed. But then I learned about it more and talked to more people about it. And I realized that it's actually kind of cool because you're not trying to be a role model or trying to be no. anything. No. The opposite. Mm -hmm. You're so into your own thing and your yep. own path and your own stuff. Yeah, when people come knocking and they're like, "Hey, what you got going on over here?" We're like, "What? Yep. You're interested in this? I guess that's cool. I'll tell you a little bit, but I'm busy. Bye." And then we keep going. So it's like, to me, it's like I see this person in my head who's kind of indifferent, mm -hmm. but all these people are gathering behind them, and they're just like, huh, "I guess so," and they just start walking, and everybody follows. Them. And that to me feels much easier than actively trying to be a role model yeah that sounds hard yeah i um, i love how so you once i reconciled it yeah it was much easier i no, i love how you put it that you like you're not trying to be the role model you just are um and i totally i feel that like it's not um i'm not trying i just show up as myself and mm -hmm. being on the roof as with the fourth four line in front um I started, I'm like, either, do I want to network? Do I not want to network? Do I want to be yeah, around people? Do I not want to be around people? And a lot of times I don't, especially in the last five years. I don't really want to. I love that we're online. I love that I don't have to like, because as much, we do have an energetic exchange even in a Zoom room, but in person is so much greater 
you, it's so much easier to absorb yeah. someone else's energy. And a lot of times I just don't have the energy for it. I just don't want to do it. Even, even as a manifesting generator, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but now I feel like it's starting to shift a little bit, I think. Um, and maybe it's because I'm 40, um, but it's shifting in that, like, I don't feel as, I don't really care what other people think like I used to. So coming down off the roof is just like, yeah, I'm just going to tell this is this is it. This is me. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I want to share. It's and, almost like you want to do it on purpose just to be yeah. like, screw you. I'm coming off the roof. Like you're like, it's like a little revolt. Like that's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, I'm going to go yeah. against my design just a little bit. I'm just going to come off the roof. And, and I, I think it, that's, it's great. I love, I mean, coming off the roof. In little snippets, in little pieces, feels really good right now. As long as I can retreat, and I think this is why I'm mountains environment, so is my husband and one of our children is as well, moving up here to Evergreen. We live in the, mountain. we live in the mountains. Um, I'm so happy for you. It's, it really does. I mean, it's like our sanctuary. It's our place to go, and we don't have to engage with anyone else unless we want to. Um, and that feels really good. Both my kids are two fives, or are they five two? Five two, sorry, five two. Um, and my husband's a my husband's a six two, so they're like hermits. Really? Yeah. Huh. Hermits and like we just you do have sleep. a lot of yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that's fascinating. Funny, but they're probably like naturally good at stuff, though. I bet you they are. Yeah, yeah. In a way where you're like, how is this? My husband's a two four, and he does certain things, and I'm like, that. I that would have took me like a week to figure out how to even start, and it's already done. I'm pretty done. Yeah, a hundred percent feel the, that. If you just did the dishes this fast. It would be amazing. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like you said, it's interesting to look at if you're. In, I mean, even if you're not new to human design, to look at the charts of your family, it really can give you a lot of grace towards them and a lot of compassion well has Absolutely. towards my husband anyway because i i look at stuff and i'm like oh this is how you process this is how you move yeah. through the world this is your energy and yeah. it is not mine and yeah. you've been very very supportive with my projector energy um he still doesn't get it but yeah he tries to be really nice to me like he gives me my mornings to myself and I'm, I'm like, I have to go for a walk. He's like, okay, bye. And mm -hmm. I just leave. And I used to try to invite him. He's like, I'm going to go for a walk. Do you want to come? Do you want to come? And my head is like, say and no. Please say no. <laughs> I love my husband, but yeah. as a mental projector, I have to be by myself sometimes. And yeah. in the apartment doesn't cut it mm -hmm. a lot of the time. I need to get out and walk outside. It helps me feel like my brain is opening up. Mm -hmm. And I feel lighter and I feel like I could process things more easily. Yeah. And yeah. I don't have an agenda on these walks, people. So if you think you have to like move through stuff in here, like there's something, things you need to do, just go for a walk. Just throw yourself out on the street and walk, mm -hmm. not in the middle of the street, but you know, yeah. and stuff will happen. You don't have to make it. That's a big, huge thing for me that I'm working on. And I think I'm getting really into is I don't have to make shit happen. In fact, yeah. That's like against my whole design is to try to make stuff happen. Yeah. So yeah. it is. No, I'm going I, the other way. <laughs> I totally agree. Like you yeah, I build into my schedule as well of just time to sit and not think or have responsibilities of any kind. Just sit there and like stare out the window. <laughs> or where go for are a you, walk. where are you undefined? What centers are you undefined in? Undefined um, head and Ajna, undefined will center, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason I asked you this is because it's interesting to me. Because as I talk about mental projector and needing breaks and a low time and blah, 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 you're a manifesting generator. You also need those things. And so mm -hmm. I just, to hear where you're undefined makes sense to me that you mm -hmm. would need to give your brain a break. Yeah. And undefined mm -hmm. heart really works hard. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of things that was, um, oh, and undersigned solar plexus. I forgot about that one. Sorry. Oh, your sacral, right? 
Yeah, say it, girl. <laughs> yeah, that's the big one is the solar plexus. That's the real big one that needs to be emptied out because you get a lot of stuff. They send a lot of stuff and um, my husband's a emotional projector, um, but you would never know it. Very even killed. And I mean, his even his emotional wave is like, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is he 1222? <laughs> yeah. He's very like, yeah, very steady. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel everything. I feel, I mean, all of it, especially when he goes. And it makes you feel crazy. Makes bonkers. Feel crazy. Bonkers. Because you're like, everybody around me is like, and I'm like, yeah. And I mean, honestly, I, I was like, I must, there must be something wrong with me. Like there yeah. must be something emotionally wrong with me yeah. that I can't handle my emotions and I can't manage them. Yeah. And then I realized, well, you're trying to handle and manage things that aren't yours. Uh -huh. So yeah. Quit it. 100%. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, understanding human design of my husband under, yeah, allowed me grace in how he makes decisions because it is completely different from me um, and giving him the space that he needs to make those decisions. He takes a long time. He has a defined head in Ajna and the defined solar plexus. So he's very heady and then still has to ride his emotional wave and connecting the two. There's, it's a wide split. It's a lot. Um, yeah. And then even like, come on. I am. I'm like, come on. make. So, and he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but understanding my kids. People are living their design and they have no idea. Right. Uh, it's understanding my kids too and how to help them as they grow up and helping them understand emotions. And they're both MGs, both five twos. One is emotional and one is sacral. My daughter is the sacral and she, understanding how to deal with the open solar plexus myself has helped me be able to help her understand her own emotions. She like wild emotions and they're not always hers. Mm -hmm. And helping her understand that and how to work with it and how to process it when it's not your, I mean, it's been invaluable to understand human design as a parent. Mm -hmm. I love that you use it with your kids too. I really, I really think it's like a, like you have a head start mm -hmm. from the people who aren't doing this. Even if your kids aren't into it, like even if they grow up and they're like, this thing's weird, I'm not into it. They grew up in a place where it was okay to be open-minded about things and to look at yourself and go, yeah, I'm different from other people. Yeah. And I think that that is really cool that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they just, who they are is accepted. Like they don't have to be anything. I always try to give my son extra time to make a decision where, um, so he can ride through any emotions. Um, even telling him that when, cause he'll have an outburst and it does, it it's wild to watch him because it resets him. It's this, in when you think of the emotional wave, it's a chem chemical process that needs to reset. And when he has an outburst, he resets and he comes back and he's fine. It's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, okay. And it's, I'm over here going, <laughs> just hilarious. <laughs> deep breathe, deep breathe. Yeah. Don't take into any of this. Um, but even telling him that, that it's okay to get upset. It's obviously not okay to hurt anyone or damage things, but like, it's okay to feel that emotion. Because it's your body resetting and how, I mean, how helping him um, understand what he needs in those moments so that he can reset and it's not shamed or um, repressed in any way. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's cool. My sister is an emotional projector and growing up, her name is Monica and her nickname was Monica the Monster because her emotional projector self was wild just exactly like you said she would go on like a rampage screaming yep. and breaking things and just like craziness yeah and then it would go away and she would be fine and i mean this was the 80s so my parents did not treat her like an emotional projector they grounded her and sent her to her room and yelled at her and mm. all these things and i the non-emotional was just like it's gonna happen are they gonna, are they gonna kill her uh, what's what they gonna do? Um, like I would, I would, like I don't know. I would be freaking out mm -hmm. in my head because I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, and she would just she had a temper like a fire, 
She -hmm. still does as an adult, but it's crazy to see that Mm -hmm. as the emotional authority. A lot of times your emotions are not clear, but we know what's going on. And with the non-emotionals, we're like, like, what is going on with me? And yeah, it's so crazy because growing up, I was always called the emotional one. Like you're mm-hmm. crying, you cry too much. You're always crying. Why are you always crying? And I was like, I don't know. Because of all this stuff happening around me. Yeah. And I still cry all the time. But now when it happens, I'm, I'm like a detective. I'm like, you, are you having a conversation over there that's serious? What's happening? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. like when you talked about your kids, I get like, because I know that you probably really care about your kids. Yeah, and I like, I feel like I feel it, even though you're not like going on not about your kids. I like feel it, and I'm like, and I get mm. like I cry. And in every reading I've ever done, I, at one point I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna start crying now. So just let me keep going. Let me keep going. And it's always it's different weird parts. Something will hit me. I'll look at them through the little Zoom thing, and I'm like, shit, I'm about to tell them something that's gonna really mess them up. <laughs> and then I get like. <laughs> Because I can see it. It's like you see that quality in them and you're like, I have inner vision. So mm-hmm. all of these things, like I can see it when I'm doing stuff. And that's mm-hmm. what's so cool about human design is let's, I'm not trying to do any of these things. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. It's just who you are. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Uh, I've loved this conversation. Do you... I feel like there's something else that your mental projectorness wants to share <laughs> before we go. Uh, yeah, look at your human design and mess it all up. I know I'm yeah. a third line and you might not be a third line, but look at it and do, do, do something different and mm-hmm. see how it feels. Obviously, mm-hmm. don't try this with like, I'm going to buy a house decisions or I'm going to quit right. my job decisions, but smaller decisions and choices. Stretch it, stretch the boundaries. It, mm. There's some limiting pieces of human design that if you if you just let go of them or look at them from a different way, you can really open up your your mind and your experience with design. Um, that's been my big thing lately is kind of not worrying so much about the rules mm-hmm. and how things are supposed to go and how you're supposed to use this tool and just try it out for yourself and see mm-hmm. how it goes. I absolutely, absolutely love that. Yes. I mean, it is. I mean, it's an experiment. Like there, there's, there's not even rules. It's just like, Hey, this is maybe how it shows up, but experiment. Yeah. What works for you and what feels right for you and trust that what you feel is, is right and correct for you. Um, love that. Oh, so cool. Thank you, Janelle, so much for being here and chatting all about mental projectorness and all the things. So uh, I will leave your website in the show notes if anyone wants to connect with you. Um, But yeah, thank you so much for today. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys.